So inflation is higher than it's been in generations, maybe than it's been ever, depending how you measure it. So Joe Biden's response, he's going to print a lot more money and send it to the government of Ukraine. Today, I'm announcing another $800 million to further augment Ukraine's ability to fight in the east in the Donbass region. This package includes heavy artillery weapons, dozens of howitzers, and 144,000 rounds of ammunition to go with those howitzers. It also includes more tactical drones. Sometimes it will speak softly and carry a large javelin, because we're sending a lot of those in as well. Oh, spare us this stupid Churchill stuff. It's not just the guns that we're sending. The Treasury Secretary announced today we're sending another half a billion to pay for the salaries of workers in the Ukrainian government. Is that government, should we be doing that? But more to the point, what happens to all these weapons that we send to Ukraine? Well, according to CNN, we don't know. Quote, the U.S. has few ways to track the weaponry to send across the borders, so the weapons are disappearing fast. Watch. The first shipments of that new, more heavy-duty military assistance for Ukraine started arriving in the region over the weekend. But there is already concern that more equipment may be needed soon. A U.S. official said there is growing concerns about the ammunition inventory of the Ukrainians, as it's expected that heavy ground combat will be picking up in the coming days in eastern Ukraine. Now, this new round of $800 million worth of security assistance includes 18 howitzers and 40,000 artillery rounds. But a source said that those could be expended and used in just a matter of days. Now, the Pentagon has been working, trying to address how to arm the Ukrainians faster. So they've beaten you into submission with moral lectures. Meanwhile, the White House has sent more than a billion dollars to Ukraine in just the past week. And then today, as we told you, the Secretary of the Treasury announced we're sending another half a billion to pay the salaries of Ukrainian government workers. Shouldn't we have an audit of Zelensky's finances first? Oh, shut up. That's Russian disinformation. Colonel Doug McGregor is a former senior advisor of Secretary of Defense. He joins us tonight. Doug, thanks so much for coming on. So is there no concern that, because we've seen this so often in the past, that weapons that we send to a war zone might wind up in the wrong places? Well, I think there is some concern, but not enough to uh, stop the hemorrhage of uh, material and money into Ukraine. We've had terrible problems in the past with accounting for where weapons and ammunition go. We saw that in Southeast Asia. We've seen it in Iraq and Afghanistan. And I think we can say with some certainty that many of these weapons will end up in the hands of people we'd rather never see them in. But that aside, if you listen to what President Biden said today, he's conveying the impression that any of this will change the outcome. It will not. What's happening right now in the Donbass is the final annihilation of what remains of Ukraine's best forces down in the southeastern corner of the country. Uh, they, they can't change that. Remember, the distance from Poland to the battlefront is roughly the same as the distance between St. Louis and New York City. They don't have the infrastructure to train people. They don't have the infrastructure to sustain the equipment. And then they've got to move it. I'm afraid the only thing we're doing is escalating tensions with Russia and turning Western Ukraine into a large target set for Russian missiles, rockets, and uh, airstrikes. I, 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 this is also sad for so many people, mostly the Ukrainian civilians caught in the middle of it. Are we making life better for them? It seems like we're fighting to the last Ukrainian, to me. Well, we are. And, and the thing is, I, I really think the president and his supported, uh, supporting advisors believe that somehow or another they're going to arrive at a negotiating table in the future where they will be able to dictate terms to Moscow. And that's not going to happen. And if there is no negotiated settlement, then Western Ukraine just becomes a firing range. Anytime they see any evidence for significant military uh, equipment show up, they'll destroy it from a distance because the Russians have never been interested in crossing the Dnieper River. They were always interested in destroying the Ukrainian forces. That job's about through. Uh, so I think the, the sad truth of the matter is that this is a proxy war in which we're sending large numbers of Ukrainians to die without any real hope that will attain anything of importance to them. God, it's so depressing. And it's especially as you put it that way, as clearly as you do. Colonel Douglas McGregor, thank you so much for joining us tonight. So we're mourning, as we told you a moment ago tonight, the involuntary retirement of Mike Wallace's son. Boo-hoo, no more lectures on TV.
But even as we're doing that, we have an announcement of what you're going to see on this show tomorrow night. And we'll tell you after the break. Subscribe to the Fox News YouTube channel to catch our nightly opens. Stories that are changing the world and changing your life. I'm Tucker Carlson tonight.